Hey, what's up everybody? Chris here, and it's finally time for me to talk about my top five films of 2022. 2022, the year is coming to an end. It's December now, and I want to preface all this by saying that there are two movies that I have not yet seen that I think could potentially sort of work their way into this list, and so I guess this is kind of tentative, and I'll do reviews of these movies when I get a chance to see them and when they're released, but those would be The Whale and Avatar 2. Avatar 2, I'm not really sure quality-wise how good the story there will be. I'm hoping it's great. I really like the first movie, actually. Um, I think really it's probably going to be more of a technical showcase than anything else. We'll kind of see what happens there. But, you know, I also want to say these are my favorite films. I'm not necessarily saying these are, you know, you know, objectively speaking, the best films. Um, and part of that is because there's just no way I can see every film that's been released this year. I would love to do that. I just don't have the time to do it. So... I've tried to pair this back to five movies that just really stood out to me as being my favorites. You know, ones that I really enjoyed, ones that I think either push the envelope from a filmmaking perspective, um, just have extraordinary acting in them, or that I just really think have a lot of rewatchability. So all that said, it's time to get excited. And let's go ahead and jump right into this list. All right, so number five on my list is Top Gun Maverick. Uh, I am not honestly a huge fan of the original Top Gun. I think it's okay. I don't think it's that great of a movie. So I went into seeing this one um, a little bit hesitant about it. Um, I I'm totally fine with Tom Cruise as an actor um, and sort of the movies that he's done. He's actually in a lot of my favorite movies, such as Minority Report, those types of things. Um, I love the Mission Impossible films also. So I went into it a little bit hesitant, a little bit reticent about what the quality would be like. But I had seen that it got a lot of great reviews just from sort of an action movie perspective. And that was totally on point. It's one of the coolest films I've ever seen from that point of view. The way that they set up shots on these jets, the way that they stage the action, it's really, in a lot of ways, unlike a lot of movies I've ever seen before. And it just stands out as being a really thrilling experience in the movie theater. And this is one of those movies that I think absolutely should have been seen on a big screen. And I think it's actually getting a second theatrical run. So if you didn't see it the first time, you've got an opportunity to go back into a theater and see it. I can't remember what day it's going back into the theater. I think it's within the next week or so. And it's going to run through like December 15th or something like that. And I can double check on that. But just an outstanding film from that perspective. I wouldn't say the story is anything all that special, really. Um, and actually, you know, in, in kind of a comical way, a lot of people have drawn some parallels between this and Star Wars A New Hope. And when you dig into that a little bit, you can see some of those uh, similarities and it's kind of insane actually but again from a pure adrenaline pure filmmaking perspective this was awesome this is one that I don't yet have on 4k blu-ray but I'm totally gonna buy it because I think it's gonna do that medium a lot of justice if you have not seen Top Gun Maverick it's my fifth favorite film of the year definitely check that out number four on my list is Prey so this is the Predator prequel that nobody really knew they wanted potentially but again a really well-made kind of back-to-basics Predator offering and Predator has kind of stumbled for a bit right the original, in my opinion, is a Stone Cold classic. I love it. Predator 2 is actually really good, too, for different reasons. It's a different type of film. But then you get into things like Alien vs. Predator, uh, Predators, which actually I did like a lot. The Predator, the one that came out in 2018, 2019-ish, something like that. I thought that was pretty terrible, actually. Um, Prey is none of those things. It kind of goes back to the formula of the original movie. And it, in some ways, improves upon it, I think. It's a much more kind of understated film than the original movie is. Obviously, it doesn't have the star power of someone like Arnold Schwarzenegger sort of driving the action there. But it's just so cleverly structured. It makes you care about the characters. Uh, it's got a good runtime to it. I was totally engrossed in it and involved with it. And I love what they did to try and reinvent Predator as a franchise. And I guess reinvent is not the, the right word, but to uh, reinvigorate maybe would be a better word. I really love this movie. It came as kind of a surprise to me, um, but for me, Prey is my fourth favorite film of the year. Coming in at number three on my list is The Batman, and so I really didn't know that we needed another Batman movie. I thought the Christian Bale Dark Knight trilogy from Christopher Nolan was fantastic. Uh, maybe the best superhero trilogy ever, in my opinion. I think it's better still than some of the Marvel movies. Um, but the Batman surprised me. Um, this is one that I took my son to see. And so he's 12 years old. It was kind of one of those borderline things about whether or not I thought he would really be into it. Because it's a longer movie. It approaches three hours or maybe goes over three hours. I can't remember exactly. But it's longer. It's much darker, you know, uh, in a literal perspective. You know, the filmmaking is very dark. But also just sort of the themes in it. I mean, in this in this version of Batman, the Riddler is a serial killer. So it's, it's sort of a no-frills, no-holds-barred type of approach to Batman. With Paul Dano playing the Riddler, um, but I thought that Robert Pattinson was great as Batman. Um, I will say though, if there's one thing holding this back, this version of Batman, brooding though it is, and that's who Bruce Wayne is as a character, 
is sometimes a little bit too brooding, I think. I mean, there are times where it just feels like there's not a ton of personality to the way Batman is portrayed here. But it also kind of works, just given where he's at in life and given what this version of Gotham City is like. And Gotham is a character in this movie, and I absolutely love it, in the same way that it is in the Tim Burton Batman movies. But this one, especially in the beginning, you get this great introduction where you kind of get a sense that Batman's been around for a little while and the the villains of the Gotham world are scared to go out at nighttime because they just assume he's lurking in the shadows. It's a great movie, um, expertly made. I think we're getting a sequel to it. I hope so. But the Batman... Awesome film, third favorite film of the year. Number two for me is The Fablemans, and I just posted my review for this not long ago. You know, for me, uh, Spielberg frequently does not disappoint. You know, there may be a couple of missteps here and there in his filmography, but not really many. And this is just another example of why he is the master director, in my opinion. I think he's just the best out there. I think his directing style and abilities continue to improve as he gets older and more mature with his filmmaking, and it, he's just unparalleled in a lot of ways. And I think that it's just such a great movie when it comes to sort of underscoring the importance of family, uh, the importance of having support when you're pursuing a dream and you want to try and you know work toward that that end goal. It's just a great movie, and I'm not going to re-review the entire thing here. You can watch my review, and I'll link that in the description below. But The Fablemans is great. I think it's going to be up there uh, as a Best Picture contender, and I think there will be some Best Supporting Actor and potentially Best Actor nominations coupled with that as well. But The Fablemans is great. Before I get to my number one film, I wanted to throw an honorable mention out there, and that is Jordan Peele's movie Nope. This, to me, is a much improved offering from what we had with Us. I mean, that was a, an entertaining movie. I thought it was kind of a step down from what we got with Get Out. Uh, nope is a really great film. Um, it does a lot of things well. It's a really unique uh, vision for a horror film. It's kind of a sci-fi horror, indie sci-fi horror, if you want to look at, it, look at it that way. Like a lot of his movies, I think it's got kind of a, a minimalistic vibe to it a little bit. Um, at the same time, it's got a lot of interesting details sort of crammed into it. The one place where I think this movie missteps, and this is what kept it out of my top five, was that I don't really love the way it ends. I feel like it kind of is a little bit ungainly in the concluding moments of the movie. There are some things I like about the conclusion, and in some ways it's kind of clever, but there's not a whole lot of explanation given, which I know you know mystery tends to enrich horror and suspense and sci-fi and all of that kind of stuff if you don't have all the answers, but... It gets a little bit too abstract for its own good, in my opinion, in the final moments, and that's kind of what held it back a little bit. But still, it's a great movie. It's totally worth checking out if you like horror, if you like sci-fi, if you like Jordan Peele. Uh, highly entertaining. It's got some really funny moments in it as well. Um, and, of course, it's genuinely creepy, as you would expect. So that's my honorable mention. So my number one film for 2022, and the film that I think, personally, of the ones that I've seen this year, and again, this is, these are just the movies I've seen. I haven't seen everything, but of the ones I've seen, I think this is my favorite. I think it deserves Best Picture, again, based on what I've seen so far, is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I watched this the other night for the first time, um, and I know there's sort of a chance for recency bias and having just seen something, but it completely blew my mind. It kind of had shades of the Matrix in some ways to me, but this is a movie that tries to address human existence in a way that few movies have done before. It takes the idea of a multiverse and pushes it out to the nth degree to, again, just sort of chaotic, bizarre uh, deep effect, and I mean all those terms in the best way possible. The way this film is directed to is completely unique, it feels completely original. All of the turns that we get from all of the participants in the movie, including Jamie Lee Curtis, I had no idea that she was in this film, are just great across the board. What's so brilliant about it too is that it's really kind of a veiled commentary on, you know, parent-child relationships, on sort of the rigmarole of daily life and how we just have a lot of things being thrown at us all the time and it's impossible to sort of process it all and make sense of it all as human beings. But what it does too is it tries to drill down to a core message about the human condition that has to do with sort of living in the moment and appreciating all of the little miraculous great things that are in your lives. Beyond all that too, it's really funny. I mean, it's got some legitimately laugh out loud uh, pieces to it it's got some great fight choreography. Um, again, it, to me, this is one of the more transcendental pieces of filmmaking that I've seen in a long time. I, I think, you know, just everything that it tries to accomplish, just the sheer ambition of it is really kind of unparalleled. I haven't seen anything like this in a while. For that reason, it's my favorite movie. It's one that I'll rewatch many times because I think it's going to take that kind of effort to get everything out of it. And I don't know how many times it would take to get literally everything out of it, which is sort of an impossible task. But 
it's just fantastic. I absolutely loved it. It's my best picture of 2022. So anyway, that's my list. What do you think about it? What are your favorite movies of 2022? I'm sure there's going to be some other things that I see in December that are technically 2022 releases that I could probably squeeze into the list and I'll review those as I see them. But I would love to hear what you think. Uh, as always, drop your comments below and we'll chat soon.